It's been almost two years since a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck the nation of Haiti and in a matter of seconds over 300,000 people lost their lives and millions lost their homes. And the mission behind the organization, Community to Community, is to provide these individuals with the financial materials and the intellectual resources to rebuild their community, to be more sustainable and efficient. And with us now is CEO Marie Usibi. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Can you take us back two years ago? Um, what was it like in Haiti? Chaos, um, despair, um, sadness. It was hard for a lot of people. It's a small country, so most of us don't know anybody who didn't lose somebody. And there are people who there was a story I specifically remember reading of a man who lost 42 members of his family. So in one instance, he became an orphan, he became a widower, and he lost all of his children. So it was very hard to watch that on a daily basis. Um, but I'm happy to say that two years later, almost, that things are starting to change. And by change, what's going on in Haiti right now? Well, I would say that when we first um, created community to community and we went down in August 2010 it took us about an hour and a half almost two hours to get to the location um, in Petit Guave where we work but the main road the Wu National is what it's called um, is actually being fixed even as we speak so instead of feeling like you're an ele on electrical bull for three and a half hours now it feels like a smooth road which is very important um, when we land, we, there's a lot of supplies that we take. We have volunteers that are with us. So it's important. And it, overall, just for, to get from one place to another with, with resources and with supplies. So now that trip is a lot smoother. So I'm thankful for that. <laughs> so two years later, the infrastructure of Haiti is gradually being rebuilt. Yes. And your organization is providing people with the skills. Um, I think it's important when you're rebuilding to provide people with the necessary materials mm -hmm. to rebuild. And sometimes they're not concrete materials, they're intellectual properties. Can you tell me what is your organization doing to help the people of Haiti? Well, when we first launched um, and we went to Petit Wav, we did a community assessment. We met with six different tent cities. And out of those six, we chose three. And there was one specifically that seemed to be advanced uh, than the others. They actually presented us with plans and um, architectural drawings for a school, um, for a water distribution center to replace the reservoir, a reforestation program that they had already started themselves, as well as reconstructing the road. We took those plans and brought them back here to the U.S. And with research, I actually came upon two really wonderful uh, people who actually work with Engineers Without Borders. Um, the first was uh, Charles Newman, who's an architect. The okay. other was Miles Troop who is a water engineer. So got them together and they reviewed the plans because I don't have a, a background in engineering or, architect, or architecture myself. And then we went back in October of last year in order for them uh, to meet with the community. And that's the whole point of community to community or as we call it C to C, is working with the community. So they came down and they met with their architects and as a result came up with new, even better plans. So since last year, what we've done, and I realize now it's January, so it is almost two years. What we did last year was that um, we, in April, launched our water system. So we found a stream, a, a spring rather, where natural water was coming out. And okay. this was a huge big deal because up until April, we were in a drought for almost seven months. Wow. And understand that the, the community that we work with is on a mountain. So it's not like you can run across the street to Pathmark and you know get a bottle of water, or anywhere for that matter. So it was very challenging for us um, that we went there to do the water and there was no water to, uh, to secure. So with the help of the community, we found an alternate location. Mm -hmm. We then secured it with what's called a spring box and a captage, which um, basically the, the spring then is protected from animals and um, any kind of waste or trees and leaves and things like that. Okay. So that phase is actually done. And we're very happy about that because right now six gallons of clean water is coming out of that spring, ah. serving the community. So that was phase one. Phase two is that we broke excavation to put in a water tank. And from the water tank, we're going to have four kiosks. And those kiosks will make it very, 
this is probably the best part. Folks walk approximately four hours to get water, wow. one way. And some of those people are kids who are about six years old who carry those big gallons of paint that you see at mm -hmm. Home Depot and Lowe's. I can't lift that. But you'll see this six-year-old little girl dragging this water. So where, we've put the, where we're going to be putting um, the kiosks, they'll be able to walk to get it, and it won't take them four hours. So that's what we're hoping to accomplish this year, is to complete the water system and then start on the school. So it's a little by little. Oh, absolutely. So what can people do at home who are watching this? Once again, we're moved. Um, I, I know two years ago, anyone who had a TV set, mm -hmm. no matter what channel you were watching, you were totally moved by the earthquake in Haiti. What can people at home, once again, do to help the people in Haiti? Because it's not over. No, and it won't be over for a while, but I, I think, um, what's the phrase, slow and steady wins the race? Okay, so as long as we see progress, I think that that's what encourages people. Even if it's just a little bit, it gives them hope to continue. So we have a, uh, many sayings in C2C, but particularly <laughs> to the people that you're talking about, your viewers, I would say, do what you can where you are with what you have today. Don't always assume that it's money. We're always looking for volunteers, whether that's in technical areas or just to help us at events, help us to get the word out. If you love to write, we have a wonderful um, a person who's handling our social media right now. Her name is Fatima Doso. And um, she has been on Twitter for us. We just relaunched our blog today. We want people to get engaged in the conversation because this is an important topic that people are talking about. Where is the progress? Where is the money that was given? Um, over five billion dollars. How, how has that not streamed in? What are small grassroots organizations like myself doing and that people can get help? I think that what we've learned in the last two years is people, it's not that they don't want to give, mm -hmm. it's that, that they want to make sure that whom they're giving to is trustworthy and that if they give that the money will go exactly where the organization says it's going to go. On our website we want to be transparent. Mm -hmm. So. If you go, for example, in October when I was last there, we were helping the community with sanitation. Because if you think about it, is it reasonable to ask someone to wait a year to go to the bathroom? Is it reasonable to ask them a year to drink water or to eat? I totally respect the whole transitional um, process that they're going to, but there's some immediate needs that are non-negotiable as a human being. Correct. And that's the challenge. So those of us who are in it on a grassroots level, those are the things that we're handling. And by working with the community, the community has skills themselves. So we're working with them. Um, a month prior to our going in October, the community we were working with had no means of going to the bathroom. That's ridiculous. Wow. So in working with them and just building the trust, because again, it would be difficult for you to tell somebody that. Because as a human being, there's some things that separate us from everything else. So being able to talk about that and mm -hmm. say that, now they have 15 latrines that they've built themselves. So we have some video um, from C to C, mm -hmm. um, I guess on your recent trip to Haiti? We have that and I know that we brought the commercial video as well. Perfect, let's roll that. A year ago, Clean flowing water did not exist in this village, in Petit Guave, Haiti. But one year after the earthquake, community to community has made real progress, working with the people of Petit Guave, Haiti. But there is still much left to do. Haiti still needs our help. Join us for Hope and a Future, a benefit concert for Haiti featuring the Friends of Haiti, with special guest Olita Adams, Chrisette Michelle, and Callie Me. Friday, January 13th at the Walt Whitman Theater, Brooklyn College. For ticket information, call 718-951-4500 or visit communitytocommunity.info. So that's the event. Um, there's a teaser to an event that's taking place on January 13th. Exactly. This is a great opportunity for people to give back if, um, whether or not, it, I, 
I know you said sometimes it's not about money. It's about val it's it's about volunteering. But there's some people who, you know, because of constraints, they'll never have an opportunity to give that enough time. Mm -hmm. You have some Grammy Award winners that are helping out with this benefit. Yes. Can you tell me more about that? We are very blessed this year, actually. Um, Salmas Productions, the production company that put the uh, event on for us, um, the executive producer, Alona Dotson, worked extremely hard this year getting some really top-notch people. So we wanted to give a little bit of flavor for everyone. So we have Olita Adams, who's coming, and everyone knows her with her, the song of, you know, Get Here If You Can, which has become like our theme song this year. <laughs> um, we also have um, Chrisette Michelle, who's very passionate um, her new album, she talks about uh, murmuring, uh, that she wants to come against the complaining and that we're very blessed here in this country. And we should think about that as it relates to the world around us. And then we have the amazing Kompa band, um, Carry Me, well known within the Haitian community and also very passionate about Haiti as well. And we wanted to look for folks who had big hearts, not big egos. And so these folks came in and they have been very um, giving not just of their talent and their time, but to show, to keep Haiti in the, in the forefront that, so people don't forget. We also have a lot of local artists because we wanted to give folks uh, an opportunity to know that there are a lot of folks here in New York who are very involved in the cause as well. So we have Mosaic, which is a local um, Haitian jazz band. Okay. Um, we actually also have, and this is also another blessing, the Christian Cultural Center Choir will be performing. And the marvelous songstress Wanda Nash will be there. Barbara King will be there. Um, I'm trying to think of, of this some is other Bobby folks. Reporting oh, from we that actually have, and this is an interesting point for your viewers, a Native American troop coming. Oh, nice. Did you know that the original people of Haiti were the uh, Arawak and Taino Indians? Indians. And I, I did not know that there were any left. I was taught that the entire populations were wiped out. Okay. And I happened to be at a powwow with Alona Dotson, the executive producer. And I noticed on the uh, form that they were performing and I thought that's impossible. So I stayed to watch, we talked to them, shared history, and now they're performing next Friday at the concert as well. It's, so it's we're one global environment. We do what we can to help each other. Yeah. Thank you and we wish you all the best. Thank you. We look forward to you and your listeners coming down to Walt Whitman Theater next Friday, 7 o'clock, doors open. Visit us on our website. And um, if anyone has any questions, 718-393-7740. And our website, www.community2community.info.